Hello everybody. Welcome back to Art and Outdoor Life here with John. So today we're going to be painting uh, a rope bridge going over some white water. Uh, I was thinking somewhere near the mountains. Uh, so here I am wetting down the paper with my uh, large hake brush. Now I'm going to be using the card on a lot of this here. This is from imagination. Okay, so what I put in in the sky was ultramarine blue and I mixed it with uh, cerulean blue and it's very wet and just kind of uh, getting a little idea where I want my river to run, my, my stream, the fast flowing white river. <laughs> um, this is going to be a very interesting video um, painting. It took me about 25, about 26 minutes to do. Um, the colors will be raw umber some lemon yellow, uh, deep green, uh, ultramarine blue, along with cerulean blue, uh, my own Payne's gray that I made, some black, and of course, some white water watercolor, just called white watercolor. And I hope that you guys are having a wonderful day I hope that you guys had a wonderful weekend. So now I'm just dabbing out some clouds. I'm not really uh, too particular about the clouds in this scene. And I just want to kind of dab everything out and feel it out. The horizon line is going to be very... Uh, it's going to be very tall. So with some uh, raw amber here. Here comes the first post. If if any of you guys have ever been on a, a rope bridge, uh, for some people they're very scary, uh, but I've been on a few and, you know, they're always maintained pretty good, so I always have a blast when I'm on them. And actually, I was thinking about this painting, doing this painting, because there is a place out here not far from where I live, and they have a rope bridge, and it does go over a, a trout stream. It really does. Um, so anyways, off to the sides, I'm just kind of giving it, uh, you know, nothing fancy, just something that would say, okay, this is where you get on the one side of the bridge. And uh, and if you notice my post in the middle, it's darker. And it comes down further than the other two on the left and the right. That gives it the impression that that post is up closer, right? Um, that was not my intention uh, when I painted this. So, but, I mean, to give you an idea, that's how you can do it. If you wanted to make that look like the middle post is closer and the other two on each side are, are further back, all you have to do is paint darker and bring it down further or bring it up higher. So, <clears throat> here I am kind of anchoring in these posts. The ropes I put in, as you could see, there's two ropes. Um, the bottom one is the one you walk across, and the top one is the one you grab onto as you're walking across. Okay, so with a piece of a credit card, I'm scraping in some rocks. And I'm also going to uh, give this wood some 
uh, character. Uh, I want it to be kind of old, you know, older wood. And I'm doing this on the top, like maybe there's, yeah, maybe there's even splinters on the top of this wood here. You know, just using my imagination, having fun with it. And so on this side, I'm thinking, okay, well, this is, you can enter the, the bridge from either side. It could go from the left side or you can go from the right side. Because the trail, there's a trail on each side of, of this uh, river here. This racing river. <laughs> uh, okay. And um, with the uh, raw umber here, I'm just getting me a shoreline going. Uh, and then here with the card again, I'm going to create some rocks, some stones along the river bank. Um, just, you know, just kind of go and take it easy. You don't have to get all upset and throw your card if you can't get the rocks in right. You can put a little bit more over it, more raw umber over it, and try it again. Um, so here, I'm finally anchoring my rocks. Uh, to you out there uh, who've been <laughs> kind of on me about anchoring my rocks. So I'm trying here. There's so many different rocks, I'm just kind of dabbing around. So, but it does, it does give it a, a really good um, natural effect when, when you anchor them and when you put the dark, a little bit of dark underneath your scraped rocks, it does look more realistic that way. Okay, now this is my own Payne's Gray I had just made and it's very thick. Um, and I made it with black and cerulean blue. And and then I put just a little bit of white in it. Um, my Payne's Gray, I always buy, I mean, I always make my own Payne's Gray since I started painting. So this one's a little bit more, uh, it looks almost to the greenish gray side. wonderful neutral colors you know but I, I'm just putting it in here <clears throat> to give me an idea um, that okay the water's going here and what's cool about this is I didn't have to do this at all but you know I wanted to try out the paints gray after I just made it so and if I liked it I was gonna keep it but I I didn't keep it Okay, so this painting will get interesting as we go along. And if you are following along, you, you know, add in whatever you want to. Let your mind, you know, watch the video a few times and say, you know what? I'd like to try putting this in there or that color in there. You know, whatever you want to do. So here I am very gently... Um, putting in what is supposed to be the wood planks that you walk across uh, on the bottom of this rope bridge. Okay, it, it might not appear that way, but that's what that's supposed to be. Okay. Um, I didn't want to leave it as just a rope. Okay, so with some deep green is the color. I'm just kind of going along the side here. I want some grass. I want some shrubbery, you know. So I'm just dabbing along here. 
putting in some color. Love putting in colors. And I'm thinking, okay. So now I figured, okay, I'll put, make a tree over on this side. And as you can see, I did not put hardly any of that green up there. That green is very dry on my palette. So I didn't want it very dark, very bright. Um, so I'm putting some in the background too. And I'm thinking, well, you know, and here in the background, we could probably, uh, you know, because where, where does this river actually, uh, I mean, where's it going? To? Where's it coming from? Right? Okay. So just just to give it um, some shapes in there, some colors. Um, and then I'll come back later to that. Okay. So now I'm putting in some cerulean blue because I wasn't very happy with the Payne's Gray that I made. So, very cool. Very opaque. And and it's dry as well. Uh, you know, otherwise it would be running all over the place. And, you know, I, have, I paint with my board up pretty far, you know, uh, up and down. You know, even though I, I started painting with my board, with my paintings flat, on a flat surface, but then, and I have nothing against that, but as I started learning how to paint up with, it, with the board upward, um, then I was able to learn how uh, paints move and how you can try to control things and, and it makes you even more spontaneous it kind of keeps you on your toes a little bit especially if you have a lot of water in there so here I threw some white this is uh, not gouache it's regular uh, watercolor white again and uh, thank you for viewing I really appreciate that I really do Okay, so I'm kind of trying to make uh, bubbles, splashes, uh, whatever. And then I was thinking when I was doing this, I'm like, okay. But what's causing, uh, you know, the splashes, right? Like, if it's flowing, it's flowing. But if it's going to be splashing, what's causing the splash? You, you understand what I'm saying? The white in the water doesn't uh, turn white unless it's hitting something like rocks or, uh, you know, or if it's, you know, inside off the off of the edge and turning around and doing whirlpools and all kinds of stuff. So anyways, um, putting back in these planks here the edge of the planks because as you know watercolor um, everything will dry more matte and fade as well depending on how dark you paint everything so that's why I did that there okay scrape some more rocks here yeah. Now I'm going to try to make this a little more interesting. And I'm kind of liking this. Nice rustic old rope bridge with some nice little rocks on the side. Uh, very scenic if you're if you ever been across any of these, they're, they're always fun to go across. And they sway just a little bit. And uh, people do fish off of these things too. So, with the card, I'm trying to give it, uh, trying to, Trying to give it something to appear to be like stairs, but it don't matter. 
Okay, so I got both of my sides of the bridge. Got everything I want so far. Now, with some raw umber back to the trees. That you could barely see the green. So, I'm making some tree trunks with a very small flat brush. And just kind of going up and down a little bit sideways, making the tree trunk a little bit thicker at the bottom. And I'm going to try one on this side. And kind of just like that. Make it a little, you don't have to. This tree looks almost, uh, Hmm, like it needs a name because uh don't really look too much like a tree. That's okay. We're having fun here. I'm enjoying myself. And uh so with the with the card not only am I scraping on a bark, but I'm also going into the the sky, trying to push some of that paint into the sky. And uh I love the effects these cards do. This is a old credit card. Sometimes I use I cut up and I use the smaller ones that you put on your keychains. Sometimes I use a guitar pick. Sometimes I use one of those cheap nail filers that you buy. Um, you can use a lot of things. Okay, so. There's my tree branches and tree trunks. And I'm just not happy with the leaves on the trees, but we're going to fix that. Right? Okay, so I put some lemon yellow on the palette. Some fresh lemon yellow. And wow, is that bright or what? Yeah, that's bright. It, they go. I mean, it mixes very beautifully with the green, and I didn't want it that bright. And in fact, I I was gonna use uh, yellow ochre, and I wasn't even thinking about it because I have yellow ochre on my palette. But it, wow, did that not brighten everything up? That's almost like neon. <laughs> Uh, anyways, so I figured, okay, well, now that I got on there, I might as well put it to use. So uh, instead of monkeying around with it and adding more greens and stuff, so I'm just flickering up, flickering it up, make it appear like there's uh, weeds or you know, very bright grass or something. I don't know. And then I'll come back to the green. The dark green, it's called deep green, but, and then this is actually uh, ultramarine blue. Now is what I'm using for my trees, the leaves of my trees. I went from I figured ultramarine blue would make it more stand out. It wouldn't be such a a, a blob going against the uh, background. So it's working very nicely for me here. Um, don't ever be afraid to try blue for leaves, um, especially dark blue, as in this case. And then I was thinking, okay, now I'm starting to feel it. It's that painter thing, right? That creative thing, as you're going, the paint's telling you what to do. If you ever been there, I don't know if you've ever been there, but I get there a lot where the paint starts telling me, okay, I need to do this. And so I figured, you know what? I'm gonna put a mountain right in the center of, in the back there. And believe me, when I started painting this, that was not 
that was the last thing I wanted was another mountain. I love mountains, but I just didn't want to put a mountain in here. I didn't. But that sky was so dark, and I was thinking, you know, I'm not, man, wouldn't a nice mountain go in the back there? And it did. It did. So, you know, sometimes, uh, if, sometimes things that you're painting you don't expect to, is going to happen. And it happens. Okay, so here I am in my fingers. I'm just rubbing the bottom of it, like smoothing out the edges and stuff. But it also gives it a mist when you do that. So that's why I was doing that um, with my fingers. And watercolor is so easy to wipe, to wash off, just warm water, and a little bit of soap, and it's all gone. Okay, so I'm thinking, okay, now, this is going to be interesting. Some white. Okay, here we go. We're going to put some rapids in here right okay they're flowing and they're coming down they're off to the races <laughs> I apologize sometimes I get in these moments I I'm not very good at uh, narrating so it's like uh, you know watching a Monday night football game or watching uh, something and you're like, you just go off into your own world, like I did when I was painting this. Okay, so if you noticed, I'm flickering up some of the paint upward, okay? Well, I want some of it to come back toward that bridge. So, with some uh, raw umber, I figure, okay, I'll put some rocks down here, right? I'll give this water something to crash on. <laughs> this is what I'm thinking. I mean, it's logical. It's only logical that uh, if the water hits some rocks, it's going to splash. Of course, it's, you know. But then, as I'm trying to scrape my rock here, or line of rocks, boulders, whatever, it didn't work. So now, I'm recording this in real time and I'm going, okay, black, black, I want it dark, black, okay. As you can see, it's starting to blend with the color, but it's still black. Maybe I can get, scrape some rocks here. But first, let's fling the water backward. I don't think, I've never tried this, so. It's an experience, and these are fun to do. You know, there's nothing, uh, you know, remember, it's all about enjoying yourself and having a moment alone, you know, creating things. So I'm like, okay, now put a little bit below this, these rocks, but I still got to define these rocks, right? How am I going to do that? Well, I wasn't able to do that. I wasn't. I tried this and it didn't work. Tried scraping it. So I ended up just kind of smoothing it out to give it a mist. Anyways, thank you so very much for uh, coming back again. And please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and any of my other ones. And wishing you a good day peaceful morning, day, and evening, no matter where you are. Thanks again. Sincerely, John. Yeah, so here I'm thinking, okay, I just make it misty. Try to make it some, a little bit of mist in there. It didn't come out the way I wanted, but the, the rest, the whole painting did. 